Hello, I'm in the mood to do some painting today, but I don't want to do anything too complicated, so I thought I would make some silhouette paintings. And if you've never done this, I highly suggest you follow along with this video and try it out for yourself because it's so much fun, it's really easy, it's something that any level of artist can do, from beginners to advanced, and I just thought I would bring you along on the journey so you can see how simple it is to make some really effective looking paintings. And I'm going to do them in my sketchbook, but you can use any paper you like as long as it's watercolour paper. So let's get into it! Using my A4 size sketchbook page, I decided on which size washi tape I wanted to use to stick around the edges. And I've gone for one that's not too fat because I don't want to take up too much of the page. So I went for about a middle size width washi tape. Now the reason to use washi tape is because it's low tack and so when you peel it off again it's not going to take half of the paper with it. <laughs> if you use regular masking tape it's shocking for doing that. Washi tape is much more gentle and you can also use a painter's tape as long as it is for delicate surfaces. That's usually quite effective too but washi tape's easy to come by these days. I then got a skinnier washi tape and divided my page into four pieces. So. It was roughly about seven centimeters each so then I can make four little paintings oops <laughs> that one came off so the first one here I'm painting with water to begin with to wet the whole background and today I'm using my Daniel Smith watercolors you can use any paints you want it doesn't matter I'm also using a flat brush here because it's a bigger surface and it's just faster to get those paints on so I started off with a bright yellow and then I went in with an orange yellow to a much deeper orange a red into a deeper red and then a burgundy color at the top so I'm not going to go into the exact colors I used because it honestly doesn't matter I'm just trying to get a kind of a sunset effect you can see here it dried because I got called away but I will come back to that one later the second painting here I put the moon in the wrong place and so I actually lifted it higher but because the paper's still wet I just went straight over my mistake with a deeper purple and then I'm going in with an even darker purple to make a circular effect where the light would be around the moon it looks a bit funny at the moment because I'm painting in that first layer and with silhouette paintings they really do benefit from multiple layers so it looks a bit messy at the moment but I will come back to this once it's dried. The great thing about these paintings is that you don't really need to be that precise just let the paint flow and it will create some interesting effects. So the third one I decided to go for an underwater scene and I'm using some teal colors here a light one up the top and then a darker phthalo turquoise and even some phthalo blue I think at the bottom. The trick to this is to not let any part of the paper dry leaving harsh paint edges. I'm trying to get a blended effect in here. Because I was painting an underwater scene I wanted the top to be light moving down into deeper darker waters but I also didn't want it to be too perfect so that's why it looks a bit funny because I'm also giving the impression that there's some kelp in there. I also used a tissue and a dry brush to make some sunbeams coming through from the top of the water shining down into the sea. This will become more apparent on my second layer but into this last picture here I went for a very bright yellow green in the center and then used some deeper greens around it to make an old-fashioned vignette effect. If you know what a vignette is it's when you see a photograph that has a darker circle around the edges to make an oval effect like you're framing the picture and I thought this would be fun to paint. So really with these silhouette paintings you can do anything on the background you could merge all sorts of different colors together. I just like to start out with colors that are going to blend well and once my paper had dried I went in with a second layer because you can see there is a really pronounced line between the yellow and the orange there and I didn't care for that so I went in with paint on the dry paper rather than wetting the paper first this time so that I could get more control and really try to blend that yellow in with the orange and you'll see over time because this is cotton paper that orange is starting to bleed down into the yellow and it works really well you won't get that effect on cellulose paper as much which is why if you can afford to do so I would highly recommend getting some watercolor paper. It's an investment 
but you can buy smaller pads and make small little paintings so it's a great way to practice as well and by using a paper that will actually respond how you want it to it's far less frustrating than trying to work on cellulose paper where the paint won't move as much so on the purple painting here I was really just trying to get more of a blended effect so I'm painting over with different layers of paint some diluted and then some deeper so that I'm getting it really dark around the bottom and a little bit at the top and then in the central part I've got the moon glow this third painting I faffed about a bit on the background because I didn't want to lose the light rays up the top but it just looked a bit funny so in the end I did paint over the whole thing again with another layer and I lifted off that teal paint at the top with a tissue paper to get the sunlight coming through. Sometimes it's just a matter of layering paint and then taking a bit off and then adding a bit more so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect that's the other thing. It's kind of nice to let the paint run where it may on the paper because it gives the paintings a level of spontaneity and they just don't look so forced. And if it's a liftable colour like this cobalt teal, it's really easy to go in with a dry brush and take off some of the paint to give the effect of sunlight rays coming down into the water. And my last one, I pretty much went over everything again with another layer just to make it nice and bright because watercolours do tend to fade a little bit when they dry, especially on cotton paper, and I almost always will do two, maybe three layers if it needs it, but for the majority of these two layers was fine, plus the addition of some extra dark paint around the edges there to make that stronger vignette effect. So I'm basically trying to go from light to dark, radiating outwards, this first painting I did do a little bit more at the top because the burgundy colour was fading a lot lighter than the other reds and so I really wanted to make that deeper and I did blend it out a bit using some water and a couple of different paint brushes because you can see a water line and that's kind of annoying. I gently blotted some of that water off and it dried pretty well with a decent enough gradient. So now it's time to do the drawing part with black ink pens and you can use fine liners, roller balls, gel pens or even liquid ink. I've used a few different supplies just depending on how large the area was that needed colouring. I did not do any pencil drawings for these, I just went straight in with a pen. You can of course draw some pictures on the paper first before painting it and you'll usually be able to see the pencil lines show through but this time I just went in with the pen and made this up pretty much as I went along. I did have a few silhouette pictures for inspiration but this first one I had seen a silhouette picture of a hot air balloon but my colour scheme was very different and I was just thinking of pyramids in the sunset with a hot air balloon over the top so that's what I ended up doing and I got tired of trying to colour in that large area with a pen so I'm just using a bit of ink here to paint on the top and fill that in. The wonderful thing with drawing silhouettes is that they don't have to be perfect because the whole thing is black you can pretty much fix mistakes as you go and just add them into the drawing. <laughs> I did consider drawing a second balloon but I decided it was quite nice just being simple so I added in some really basic looking birds and this is what I'm talking about you don't have to be highly skilled at drawing you can do really basic things and they still look effective on the painted background that's why it's really great for beginners to help build your confidence but also it's fun for any art level because it's just a relaxing activity and you can get quite creative with it. You can also add in a lot of detail if you are a more advanced artist. So these really do have the potential to be as advanced or simple as you want to make it. In my purple painting I have a cat sitting on a tree branch with the moon shining behind it and this one was a little bit dodgy because my tree didn't turn out very well but once again you can just keep going over it and adding extra stuff to cover up any mistakes you make and it just becomes part of the picture. <laughs> so I enjoy having lighter areas within a silhouette painting so that you can put the focal point in front of the lightest area and that makes it really stand out. I left it at this one I decided this one was going to be fairly simple but my underwater one is a little more complex I did add some more detail so I painted in a rather misshapen sea turtle at the top 
It's swimming just underneath the water's surface and you can kind of imagine looking up underneath it. And once I'd coloured the whole thing black it looked a lot better <laughs> and more realistic as a turtle. Then I wanted to add in a jellyfish. I mean really when you think about it jellyfish are quite translucent but mine ended up getting coloured in mostly black. I did leave a couple of areas that were blank to show the sea shining through behind it. I mean it doesn't really matter. It looks like a jellyfish and I do quite like how this came out. So really this type of art is doodling more than anything but I do find this a really fun pastime and an excellent way to fill a sketchbook page as well or even put these on separate pieces of paper and you could make one large silhouette painting rather than four small ones as many as you feel like doing at the time. So now I'm going down to the sea floor and I've got some wavy bits of kelp and other corally looking things that I end up putting in there. So I've just really wanted to kind of frame the bottom of the picture by making it curve upwards and frame the whole thing a bit. I find if you want to do anything that shows the ground it is better to have it curving so it's more like the curvature of the earth. When something is completely flat it usually doesn't look quite right. Curving it up to the sides like I'm doing here I think makes it feel a lot more aesthetically pleasing. That's just my opinion. You may have a different idea on that one. <laughs> I then drew in some little fishies. I've got a couple of angel fish there and other random blobby fish. I think there's even a seahorse in there. So you could just have fun drawing in whatever you like and filling in any places that feel like they need to have something. My last picture here, I am doing this from the perspective that I'm looking straight up in the sky and there are trees over the top of me. If you've ever taken a photograph looking straight up at trees, they will tend to curve in on each other like a fish eye effect or that vignette sort of look so it's almost rounded. It's an interesting optical illusion that everything tends to lean in towards the center of the picture and that's what I was trying to accomplish here. So you'll see this more when I add in some more palm trees. I just went around and added them in in random spots but all trying to curve in towards that central part of the painting and I think it actually turned out pretty well. I think a couple of the trunks weren't quite in the right place and I noticed I had some bleeding from this ink onto the paper so maybe the paper just wasn't quite dry but I just covered over that with some of the rollable pen afterwards. And the good thing with palm trees is that you don't have to be too fancy with the fronds. They just all tend to go in the same direction. If you can do that they look quite effective even if you don't draw every single frond exactly right. I just tend to make it up a little bit and follow some sort of a pattern. I think palm trees are really fun to draw as silhouettes. <laughs> I drew a couple of coconuts and it looks a bit rude here so I frantically was trying to draw over that so as to get rid of that rather phallic looking effect but there we go we have another palm tree <laughs> out of that and then once again I'm just drawing in fronds pretty randomly just spoking out from the central parts of the trunks. The other effect that you want to try and get is to draw the trunks wider at the bottom and then tapering up to a narrower point at the top or the center part of the tree. And this will help make the viewer think they're looking up at the trees. It's that optical illusion effect again. I liked how this one turned out. It was really fun and I love how the vignette works in with the trees as well. It looks really effective going from light to dark. And now comes the most satisfying part once everything is dry, peeling off the washi tape. Yay! <laughs> I actually managed to do it pretty well this time. I only had one little schmutz up in the top right hand corner but otherwise it was really clean and that skinny washi tape's very good. So here's how they looked but then of course I had to go and get some white pen. It's a brand new pen and very juicy. I added in a few little highlights here and there. I think I probably should have just left well enough alone but never mind we've got some white on it now. I turned this one into a little bit of a starry sky. 
but I think overall I preferred them this time better when they didn't have any white on it. Oh well, next time I'll try that. <laughs> Well, I say I'll try that, but I know me, I tend to get a bit happy with that white pen. <laughs> I can't help myself. Okay, that white is really bright. It's a brand new pen and it's extremely juicy, so I don't know if that was a good idea or not. But never mind, I have some finished paintings and I really like how they've turned out. I love the colours, especially the background on this one. It came out really well, I think. And I do like how this is light up the top going into the darker turquoise down the bottom. This one's a bit average, but that's okay. It's still kind of turned out. <laughs> and I do like this one too, going from the yellow to the dark burgundy color. So let me know what you think. Which one is your favorite? And did you end up painting some yourself? So if you painted these on a separate piece of paper, you can easily cut these up and turn them into bookmarks or little gifts for friends. There's quite a lot of things you can do with them. I think they look really effective. It's a great way to play with colour. You can either use photos for inspiration or make it up as you go along, which is what I did especially for this one. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it today and I hope it was helpful. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so because I have plenty more videos to come. I hope you're all having a fantastic day out there and I will see you again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye.